सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली I'm with Professor Faiz Alan the professor at Kabul University he teaches public policy and he's also one of Afghanistan's best known political analysts and today I'm here in Kabul Afghanistan uh, and I'm talking to Dr Salan about the situation here in Kabul uh, after the Islamic Emirate of the Taliban took power one year ago how things have changed and what his experiences are Professor Salan welcome to the print thank you so much uh, thanks for having me Uh, one year uh, it has first it has passed so quick uh, with the flick of uh, uh, fingers it seems so uh, uh, we have been going through so many changes uh, the biggest change which we can have a comparative analysis is uh, from last year and this year uh, last year we had uh, several bombardments uh, we had several ambushes we had several suicide attacks we had uh, had several uh, insecurity incidents i think thousands of civilians have killed uh, thousands of civilian have uh, forcefully uh, migrated to their areas because of the war and security but uh, uh, in past one year uh, alhamdulillah we have uh, full security we have no bombardment we don't have any foreigner troops in the uh, in afghanistan uh, we have uh, pretty much secure cities uh, uh, the businesses uh, or uh, those trucks or those transit roads which were closed because of uh, uh, the darkness of uh, night of uh, the insecurity uh, they are open 24 hours people are roaming around mm-hmm. i myself uh, for the ever first time visited few of the provinces which were not possible for me to uh, travel there by road uh, in past 20 years so uh, those uh, changes somehow brought uh, uh, happiness uh, harmony and uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, recreational kind of thinking to many people like myself So Professor Salan you have been watching the situation for many years you were also a part of the peace process of the negotiating process between the former republic um, the Islamic Republic and the Taliban uh, team at the time in Doha and elsewhere in other capitals in the world but do you see that the Islamic Emirate has been able to transform itself into a ruling uh, regime that is one of the challenge uh, that uh, taliban might be facing not only for past one year but they might face this for uh, coming uh, several months or even years mm-hmm. because taliban's they fought the war uh, 20 years they were uh, a resurgence uh, group uh, they were uh, doing uh, all the military activities but mm-hmm. governance is much more uh, services public value uh, you need to work with people you need to hear complaints you need to reach the complaints you need to and be smooth and soft to people you need to do uh, rule of law you need to do orders you need to do uh, all those uh, good things that the governments have been doing so transitioning that uh, from uh, a military to a policeman uh, from a disruptive uh, force of uh, r- uh, uh, rule of law and uh, 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 political order or social and economical order in a uh, country to Uh, bringing an order uh, to uh, bring uh, peace and harmony i think it will take time and that that's what uh, uh, taliban's have been uh, going through that hardship but uh, uh, afghanistan was never uh, ruled uh, with a good governance we we always had some kind of caveats in our uh, governance apparatus uh, uh, specifically in past 40 years or four decades we were uh, somehow rogue state or failed state now getting out of these four decades of rogue state or failed state i think it needs more uh, passion it needs more uh, uh, close tie and uh, uh, collaborative work not only from taliban from afghan nation from everybody else but the question is that you have you also watch the neighborhood very closely afghanistan is surrounded by very interesting neighbors pakistan iran india then of course the big powers china uh, us and russia do you think the americans left or are they still here are they still watching the situation 
Uh, Afghanistan is revenged by its geography, unfortunately. I think for past several uh, centuries, uh, we have been uh, somehow uh, uh, a middle ground for conflicting forces, not only regionally, but also on the international arena. Uh, uh, America, first, America has not left because they have very close uh, uh, strategic allies in the region. Uh, Pakistan is there, India is there, uh, in Central Asia, they have close ties with Uzbekistan. They have been trying uh, best to somehow uh, accommodate itself with uh, uh, Central Asian countries, uh, their needs and their pros and cons. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Afghanistan is suffering because of the conflicting uh, forces within the region, Iran and uh, 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 America, and then uh, China, Soviet, or uh, Russia and Americans, and then Pakistan and India. Then Central Asia, within the Central Asia, these conflicting uh, dictator uh, uh, governments and their uh, nations, the conflict which is there. So all these things somehow it uh, uh, proxies, uh, warriors, proxies, uh, uh, disruptions, proxies, insecurities, and proxies, uh, uh, negative uh, competitiveness into Afghanistan. And it is creating so many problems. Like when we analyze Afghanistan as a failed country, it's failed because uh, as a nation, we were not able to protect our uh, best interests. But it is also failed because our neighboring countries, they have failed us several times. In they what way? In what way have they failed? Like they, they provided proxy warriors, they sheltered uh, anti-state ac uh, activists or groups. Uh, they have uh, did uh, dumping uh, uh, economy uh, politics against us. They have created their own uh, proxy frictions and they supported the, them. They have created some kind of cultural and uh, uh, ethnical and uh, even religious uh, uh, frictions within Afghanistan. So all those interferences which are negatively impacting Afghanistan is coming directly from the region. But when you say that they have uh, harbored anti-Afghanistan uh, forces, what exactly do you mean by that? Like in four decades, if you uh, analyze Afghanistan's uh, conflicts and those four uh, decades, all those state anti-state uh, actors, they were coming from the region. Uh, uh, for example, during Soviet, uh, uh, Iran was having eight parties politically and Pakistan were uh, harboring seven. And then during past 20 years, Taliban were harbored by uh, uh, Pakistan and even then Iran, they have provided support. And now again, we have this uh, uh, sense that if anything is happening within against the Taliban, it will come from Pakistan or Iran. How is it if the Pakistan is harboring Taliban and gave it refuge for 20 years? They are not going to be against the Taliban now. They will be supporting the Taliban. No, th that's what they did in against Mujahideen. They, uh, the Mujahideen, when there was civil war, when they, everything was uh, getting into chaos and then 9-11 happened. Mm -hmm. So they did that, they did against, Pakistan, against Taliban, they harbored uh, uh, Americans and Shamsi and Tarbela and uh, uh, there is another uh, uh, Larkana or what, another military base. They did that against Taliban. They uh, give way, they give their airfields to Americans, uh, to NATO forces to topple down the Taliban. They have even... Uh, uh, they have even uh, detained so many uh, Taliban's high rank. For example, Salam Zaif, he was the ambassador. They uh, detained Mullah Biradar, for example. They killed Mullah Ubaidullah, for example. Currently, there is a very well-known uh, uh, Talib leader by the name of uh, Ustaz Yasser. He, uh, like his family says uh, that uh, he has been murdered by Pakistan. So Pakistan did that. That is that good and bad Taliban. Uh, why do you think the Pakistani would be interested in doing all this? Okay, that is a very important question. I think the Pakistan government or their politicians, their civil society, they must uh, reply to this, that why they are not uh, loving a secure neighbor in Afghanistan or in their other uh, neighboring areas, rather than disrupting that. We know Pakistan was supporting, and I think uh, Iran is uh, somehow uh, uh, accusing Pakistan of uh, supporting uh, anti-state factors within the Iran. They have been ac accused of doing anti-state uh, factors within India. They have been accused Accused, or like I don't see there is any neighbor that loves Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So it is, I think, nationally somehow there are forces within Pakistan which benefits from this disruptive uh, policies. But Professor Zalan, I'm very surprised to hear you say this, that no neighbor loves Pakistan when Pakistan has been such an integral part of supporting the, the Taliban. In fact, when the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan soon came into being after last 15th August 2021. The intelligence agency chief of Pakistan, uh, the ISI chief, Faiz Hamid, was in uh, Kabul a few days after that. 
So it clearly shows the the proximity or the closeness between Pakistan and of, and the new Islamic Emirate. Okay, Islamic Emirate is now a government. On government level, they might tomorrow, for example, invite the CIA chief also, and he might come and they might have a meeting. The the, or the Indian chief or the Indian chief he might come. So that is now state Taliban is not anymore uh, uh, an anti-state group. It's a state now. They are running their ruling party. Uh, so they have that right. But um, uh, the most important thing is with any Afghan. During the history of you, anyone who runs the country, he owns and he loves the country. He cares for his country. That's what uh, happens everywhere else also. Taliban will never undermine the Afghanistan national interest to support Pakistan. That's what is going on. You see what is happening with TTPs, what is happening on the border. For the ever first time, Pakistan was forced to bombard Af inside Afghanistan. They, they couldn't do that. Yeah, they did that in host because if they were supportive, if they were supported by Taliban, then why they have bombarded? Mm -hmm. They couldn't have any support on the ground. That's why they used air force. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, an area that uh, any international uh, 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 forces or political uh, groups or countries, they must realize that Afghans is like any other nation, is a proud nation. When they rule, when they govern, when they uh, uh, do government and uh, provide services, they are very independent. They are very proud, like other nations. And that proudness should be respected, not should be interfered. And Pakistan should realize that they will not gain anything else. If you are firing my house, the fire will come to your house also. And that is what happened. Look, Pakistan and India, they were independent on the same year, just one day and mm -hmm. in, in between. But look to the GDP of India. Look to the development of India. Look to the status quo of India and look to India, uh, Pakistan. We are Pakistan. Then look to uh, Bangladesh. Look to Bangladesh, which is a, uh, a second bird to Pakistan. How big economy is Bangladesh? How booming economy is there? How much is stable that? How much political zeal is there? And what's happening in Pakistan? Pakistan throughout its, its history, 75 years, it never have completed an, uh, a term of uh, elected government. Mm. What a shame for a democratic country that you have not been able in your 75 years to complete. A, so that is all because Pakistan have not put its eyes and ears on its own country. It has somehow become a kind of uh, proxy creative country within the region and I think they must have realized this now that uh, they if they want to be secured if they want to be um, having a booming economy if they want to have a secure uh, neighbor in the uh, it can never happen without independent Afghanistan without uh, a secure uh, uh, Afghanistan where everything is decided by Afghans Let's talk a little bit about India and you know India well and in fact I should have told my viewers right in the beginning that uh, Professor Zaland is actually attached to Rotak University and uh, where he's uh, doing a, a part of his PhD program is, is at Rotak University. So Professor Zaland, last year when uh, on the 15th of August, which is India's Independence Day actually also when the Taliban rolled into Kabul, a few, a couple of two days after that, on the 17th, the Indian embassy, all the diplomats, ambassador, um, all the other Indians who were living in Kabul, the, the journalists, everybody left. Now, after one year, they are slowly coming back. What was the impact of that? And what, in your view, should India do? Okay, I think uh, 15th of August, the fall uh, and then the return of Taliban, it was somehow fearsome for many not only for India, even Afghans, they left and they are coming back now. Are, they coming, are Afghans are coming back? Yeah, hundreds, like even the very, the very uh, VIPs, like the former ministers, governors, they are all coming. They're all coming back? Like who? Like Farooq Wardak, for example, he is now in the city. Like Asif Nang, he was the former governor and deputy minister, he is in the city. Uh, Akram Khpalwak, he is in the city, he was the... Uh, president, special representative, political advisor, and then minister. I can name hundreds like that. So they are coming and they, every Kaisari kind of a person has also come back who was a warlord. So uh, uh, th this is like with the transition, with an uh, uh, abrupt change, I think it's uh, very natural that uh, uh, for uh, the protection and self interest of countries and people, they might change their location. India did that. Uh, uh, Japan embassy, they are coming uh, to open. There are many ABC, uh, embassies they have opened and many are uh, discussing to. Be. European Union already opened. 
So India MBC, they left with all that fear. And now once they realize that European Union is in the uh, city, all uh, United Nations uh, groups are there. Many NGOs, they have returned. So many embassies have been active, Turkey, China, uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan. They are all active. Iran is very active. Why not to come? Uh, uh, Japan is coming. Why not come? Even Germans are discussing to come and open the. So they have uh, they have decided that not only for the uh, interest of India, but also because culturally, regionally, politically, socially, Afghans and Indians, like many other countries we are affiliated, they have have this together a history. So they have come back. There are reports that uh, that the Indian embassy when it left last year that it has been protected by the Taliban, by the uh, authorities here in Kabul, and that it is absolutely intact, all the properties are intact, nothing has been touched, the furniture, the uh, everything, all the properties, both in India House, which is the ambassador's residence, as well as in the Chancery, the embassy itself. Uh, do you know anything about this? Uh, I think so. It must have uh, been like that because even the U.S. embassy is intact. <laughs> nothing has been changed. So the, all the embassies, you know, it's... Taliban, they have learned a lot. Taliban, uh, the today's Taliban, they are not the 90s Taliban, a very traditional force which have just come out of indigenously from Afghanistan outskirts and run the country. No, they, they have been through a lot of political changes, transformations. They have learned. They know how to uh, uh, play around all these important things and care about that. So, so why would they protect, say, the, the Indian embassy or the U.S. embassy like you said? Because uh, like they cannot uh, intrude into those diplomatic areas. They did even like diplomatically with the uh, international laws, those land, those structures, they don't belong to Afghanistan land. So they are different lands. It is like attacking, for example, Pakistan embassy by Taliban. It's like attacking the Pakistan or it's attacking the Indian embassy. It is like attacking. So they know this. You know this, yes, but how do they know it? I thought they were supposed to have sort of come out of the caves of no, not Tora Bora. For the past 20 years, how can they... How they have been fighting for 20 years. They've been fighting the Islamic Republic for 20 years. They were also in Doha for more than uh, almost a decade, for more than uh, seven years. They were in Doha and they were communicating and diplomatically with all those international forces and those very big powers and supreme. And then finally, they had a diplomatic win over the superpower of the world. So that they have they have learned their lessons. And with those lessons, with those learning, with those new uh, transformations, they are now uh, very much adaptive. So they are a far more sophisticated Taliban today than they were 20 years ago. Very much true. Yeah, they, they, the Taliban that we see now, they are uh, more uh, active in social media and print media and uh, radio media than anybody else. They, they, the, the way they communicate, the way they travel, the way they have engaged themselves with the global um, uh, community, it's uh, amazing. It's very much transformative. So this, you say that, you know, for seven years they negotiated, negotiated with the American, gov American government, Zalmay Khalilzad, both in the previous administration as well as in the current, current mm -hmm. Biden, but Trump. Biden, how did they, what was the, who is the brain behind this that is negotiating for seven long years and not giving an inch? Uh, I'm teaching in Kabul University for past seven, eight years. When we uh, have the new enrollment in first semester, a student who is coming from Badakhshan or Daikundi or Host or from a, a, a very, he doesn't know how to wear his uh, shirt and how to match those colors. He uh, uh, cannot understand those uh, uh, political or uh, uh, policy or administrative theories or the names that we are naming or those books. But you will not believe, Jyoti, that in last semester, after four years, he uh, he is Googling against us in the class and he somehow get into very serious uh, arguments that, sir, this is not right. This guy, uh, Max Weber didn't say this. Uh, Gandhi was very different from Thomas Jefferson in approaching the democracy. This, I, I'm getting surprised that in four years now you are like arguing with us. You have been learning from us. So Taliban, 26 years, they are in war. They are in political transformation. They are in social, economical forces, disruptive or uh, constructive. That doesn't matter, but they are in learning. So that has, I think, taught them a lot. They have learned a lot through all these many years. 
And then this uh, new generation that Taliban is having, which is highly engaged, they have learned from their family, from their fathers who run this uh, country once, who run the uh, uh, Taliban movement once. Now their kids, they, they have been engaged a lot with the international community. They have traveled a lot. They were in Oslo, they were in Germany, they were in Doha, they were all over the, uh, almost, not in US, uh, almost, they were in Japan, they were everywhere. They have traveled in past many years, everywhere around the world. And uh, uh, you might have seen the Uzbekistan conference, 20 countries with very high representatives and the Taliban. So it is, it, it all, uh, you know, human beings, they are adaptive and they are transformative. So that's how they have been uh, tar transformative and they have been learning. Through. You know, when uh, Zalmay Khalilzad and Taliban, they were having different agenda, two opposite. Mm -hmm. Zalmay Khalilzad was trying his best to take exit strategy. Get out of Afghanistan securely. And Taliban strategy was to get in Afghanistan. So two opposite. Mm -hmm. Zalmay Khalilzad was successful in getting out. Taliban were successful in getting in. But so that, that's my analysis. Maybe you will come with different interpretation. And that Republic, the Islamic Republic was yes. Who cares? Uh, uh, Dr. Saeb Ghani recently he was with Farid Zakaria and very rightly he said that uh, supreme powers, international uh, forces, they take care of their national interests rather than uh, their puppets. So who cared about us? Uh, uh, Afghanistan will never care about Iran interests. Iran will never care about Pakistan and Pakistan will never care about Afghanistan. Every country and every power is going to at, at the end of the day will care about their national interests. We Afghans, as a ruling party, like those Republicans, Ghani or Karzai, they must have learned that when they were governing, that how to run the country without the support of US or uh, NATO forces. If they have learned that, listen, you would not be now in this stage. You might have been a different stage now. So, President, uh, former President Hamid Karzai and uh, former Chief of the Executive, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, they did not leave. They were amongst the two high-profile leaders who did not leave. Although they are under some sort of a house arrest. Uh, Dr. Abdullah has recently been to India uh, to meet his, uh, uh, for some uh, work and his, uh, but, and he returned. But President Karzai has not even been out of the country. Isn't that a bit odd? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yes, it might be odd because every human being must have its uh, independence and freedom of roaming around or expression. But uh, the political uh, situation in Afghanistan is totally different. If we come up like with this abrupt and sudden fall of Kabul and Taliban coming, Taliban were not even prepared to take over Kabul that much soon. But it all happened somehow, we can say miraculously, but that, that has happened. So now... Uh, 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 President Karzai or Abdullah or many others who are uh, on second layer of leadership of the former government, uh, they are here. They are meeting Afghans, ordinary Afghan civil society, political party. They are doing their uh, interviews. You must have uh, interviewed them and uh, met them. Uh, uh, with time passage, I think the other uh, 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 freedoms will come also. But currently, in past one year, it might not be uh, a sole decision by Taliban. I think there must be some kind of understanding and agreement from Karzai and Abdullah also that what is best for the country. So this is a, a, a kind of uh, uh, examination for Karzai and Abdullah also that should they entrust their own security or the country's security. So they might have also decided that let's cooperate on this basic. That's why I, uh, I don't think so. It is odd on that uh, perspective. Other than that, uh, I think we human beings are free, we can roam around anywhere. Mm -hmm. So just to come back to India, very often India seems to look at Afghanistan through the Pakistan lens. Keep Pakistan is very getting very close to Afghanistan, so we should do one, two, three, four, five. In the coming months and years, how does India, how should India, do you think, how should it deal with the Islamic Emirate? Uh, India is a very big country and uh, they have... Uh, 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 they, they, they are, it's, I think, a giant uh, superpower in the region. It's a very powerful country. They, they know uh, how to maneuver around those uh, very strategic goals and uh, policies. But uh, as an Afghan, if uh, I would have been allowed to uh, discuss the interest of India in the region, I think it is not good for Afghanistan and not for India or any other countries to disengage. Engagement is always uh, a window of opportunity. Engagement is always good 
on the human uh, level also on the country level also government level also with engagement and understanding comes with engagement uh, uh, those disparities and those changes that we are uh, somehow fearing of we can find solutions to that so this engagement will even make pakistan to engage in a better way even it will uh, bring a kind of synergy in the region we, we, who knows maybe afghanistan the new afghanistan will become a, uh, a cooperative region rather than a disruptive region for uh, the security of uh, the regional powers so it would be nice for afghanistan pakistan and india to somehow collaborate with each other regarding the uh, regional uh, uh, political uh, stability regional economical stability regional social stability and then you know european union European Union is a, a combination of three, four, five different countries who fought First World War, Second World War against each other. We haven't fought any uh, world wars. We haven't bombed it, uh, our cities. We haven't used that much harshness. We haven't killed millions of each other. Why not? We should become a union of Southeast Asian or Central Asian or Asian Union. So we need to work on that uh, front. If you work on that front, I think more understanding, learning and cooperation will come. But uh, even if that is a pipe dream and whenever that happens and inshallah that will happen sooner than later. But in the immediate future, because there is some concern that there is this Islamic Emirate, which is a very hardline extremist organization and this understanding, maybe in the government there is this understanding, but in the people of India, who would like to engage with Afghanistan, but who don't understand what the Islamic Emirate is about. So, in a sense... Jyoti, they must, Jyoti, they must come like you have come. I, I read your first story. What an amazing experience. Your first sight from Kabul. You met an Afghan from Kandahar, a Talib, who uh, pushes for girls' school opening. His own daughters are going to school, becoming a medical doctor. This is a different, uh, a different arena. Like it's, it will be very good to have this engagement, and then this engagement becomes uh, enlarged. Uh, businessmen they get engaged. Uh, social uh, uh, activists, uh, the civil society activists, media like you, many other comes. Afghans go there. That uh, harmony and understanding on the national level, on the public level, will come. Second, very important, media plays a big role. In the beginning of uh, the fall of uh, Kabul, when Taliban, I was following the India media. They were like, whoa, like horror movies. Well, none of them I knew. None of them have come in those days in Afghanistan. So how can you create this horror? For your own people. But it was horror, Professor Zalan, the way people were fleeing those uh, scenes of Kabul airport when yes. thousands of people, yes. people holding on to the wheels of yes. the, of the you plane. You could stop that horror. You could not enlarge it, expand it. With the uh, uh, noise and yelling that, has, that was there in the Indian media and many others did that. CNN was doing that. BBC was doing that. And then Amanpur comes to Kabul. And then rooms around and then she is having all those very exhaustive uh, uh, interviews and says, wow, so many things change. I'm secure. I'm rooming around. I'm traveling. Let's do it. Uh, previously, she was in Ghor, in a very far remote province. And she was messaging, oh, I'm finding a lot of support public here for a girls' school opening. That's amazing. That's so amazing. So for Indian people, I think this will be a, a very good chance that their uh, government has decided to get engaged. That on public level also engagement restarts. Businesses, they come, the businessmen, they come, investment comes. We have cultural affiliation, cultural days together, let's celebrate. Schools, universities, I myself have classes there. The professors comes there. So it, I think it will bring back the harmony. So last question, why are there no women in the Islamic Emirate? I think first, traditionally, it is, uh, it was, in past 20 years, it was a warring force. It was a military force. So fight, uh, it is not only in Afghanistan. I think you will not find uh, the resurgent group fighters, very well-known women uh, led. First is that. Second, tradition and religious wise. Third, it is uh, uh, a change now for Taliban because Taliban were not governing. Now they are governing. Now government without public health uh, servants, women. Government uh, without uh, uh, police, uh, women officer. Uh, 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 government without police, border uh, women. It will not, you cannot run it. G government without women uh, school teachers and university professors, you cannot run it. Do they understand that? Sure, that's why if you go to the public health uh, ministry or to the 
to the schools, for example, f from one grade to sixth grade, they are open. Pr uh, private and also public university, uh, the lecturers, women, they go. If you go to border police, you must have seen them in the airport also. Mm -hmm. uh, you will see, inshallah, the screening, the, uh, all the women search and all these police gardening is done by women. But it is a slow step. We, myself, I want uh, a revolutionary step. I want three women cabinet members. It will happen. It will take time. I want three governors women. It will happen. It will take time. For uh, Republicans, it took 13 years to make Sorabi the governor of uh, uh, Bamiyan. It took for them several years to bring women into the cabinet. So uh, Taliban, it is a, a military force. It is a religious and traditional force. It will take time. Inshallah, it will come. And we all talk about women's education, girls' education. You think that will also happen sooner than later? For my daughter, I must say this. I want my daughter to be educated, to be engineer, doctor, or anything that she wants. So I, I cannot accept this. Even if that is the truth, I cannot accept. It must happen. Professor Fez Zalan, thank you so much for your time, for explaining Afghanistan to us uh, here in India. And thank you so much for speaking to the print. Thank you.